Hi everyone, I'm Alan Braithwaite from Bay Lily Bell Tents and today on our how-to series I'm going to be showing you how to fit this Frontier stove from Anave, had to check, into this five meter canvas bell tent from Boutique Camping. Now interestingly these are both old stock for us. This Frontier stove spent six months installed in our tent in our garden that we then used for our Bay Lily Meets YouTube series, link in description, and uh, we took it down at the end of the winter and it's absolutely fine. We used it weekly filming lighting fires to keep it warm. There is no no damage or anything to this flashing kit. That's why we are happy using it again. Uh, the stove has got a bit of coloration, uh, but it's fine, it's fine. And right, I need a hammer to put it up. Right, so the tent's up, we've got the stove, we've got the flashing kit, we've got our tools. I'm gonna go through them in a second so you can see what we've got. All I need now is a second person because really this is a two-man job and there's only one person I can call on and that is my amazing wife and business partner, Emily. No, no, stand there and then jump up and down. Ready, three, two, one. Hiya. Hi. You all right? Yeah. Should we go and fit this stove? Let's go. Let's go. So this is a stove we've already had up for the last season, so it's not pristine, but no. it's... Um, well, it's fully usable. Yeah, we use it, and, and it actually kicks off quite a lot of heat, doesn't it, this it, one? It does. It's one of those, you kind of want to get it going a little bit. You don't want to get... It, well, it's like coming home and the heating's not working, and you turn the heating on, it's still a bit cold yeah. for a bit. But if you're camping in this for a weekend, and you keep it slowly uh, burning, we're going to do a video on lighting a fire in it as well. So, right, let's go through it. So first up, we've got the heat mat. Really essential. Really essential because, I mean, let's be honest, ultimately stoves, whether it's, it's uh, heat retardant or anything, there's still a rubber floor and it's still canvas and with enough heat, anything's going to burn. I mean, we've seen that recently. And not only that, it, works, it, 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 it keeps your floor clean, doesn't it? Yes, it does keep your floor as, clean. As you, you can take that out and you can shake that out outside much easier than having to try and do the entire flooring. Yes, so this is going to go down here. We're going to, we're going to cover this a minute. We're going to go in the third panel, so the one after the window no real reason it's really choice the only rule is that the stove 600 millimeters 60 centimeters away from the wall and that dictates where the chimney's going so once you're 600 mil in chimney can actually go anywhere yeah. so we've got a heat mat let's get the bag open please oh. yeah we've already covered this the flashing kit there's the rubber part and two bits of metal for the technical ones above us i'm sure one's called a flange but you know that's always a laughable word right Boy. Okay, here's a stove. Oh. Okay, so let's put the legs out actually while it's here. Ooh. Okay, so we've got the um, the safe, the retaining clips. Do you know what? <laughs> Thing, things we should have thought about. There we go. So the retaining clips. Uh, the, oh, what you find out on the legs is on the heat mat, there was three circles. There's one here, one here, one here. And it will line up exactly with them. And then, you know, it provides this good um, floor print for it to go. Where was, I saw a piece of metal come off. Right, okay. That's the inside. No, it's not, it's for the outside. So that goes there, it's like an ash catcher. It's gonna catch little bits of wood when you're opening it. And, um, you know, it's, it's just one of those essential things. You might even rest something there when you're lighting it. Uh, then you've got, it's all very well saying we used it all summer. It's fine, I've just opened it. There we go. You've got to line up the little keyhole. Then you've got the cover there. That, so that's where you could put, uh, you know, a frying pan, a saucepan over, or you can put wood in. It's just access. And the way a wood burning stove works is about drawing oxygen in. So it's all little things like that. Then you've got the front door here. Then you've got. You know, the, you should, I know. You prepare before you start. Well, we it. are prepared. We just want everyone to see. This is real life, isn't it? I mean, this is done six months in a winter. It's absolutely fine. It's just a bit dirty. Spark catcher goes on top of the chimney. So, because uh, generally you're going to be on the outside. So, just in case any sparks draw up, this is going to stop them going out onto any heathland. 
Then obviously you've got the chimney, so some bits are going to go inside and the rest going outside. They're well wedged in. Ow! Where are my gloves? There. So there's two bits on the inside and uh, the rest goes on the outside. And then this bit, once again, is uh, there's a little um, flange, flange piece of metal I in there. I love the word flange. I know, I know. We all laughed as kids and I still laugh as an adult. And all that, that's about, once again, maintaining the airflow and, you know, it's about lighting it and putting it out, etc. So that's it. That's everything involved. Um, we're going to get some tools now and we're going to cut a hole in the roof, which, yeah. Don't be scared to do it. No. Just commit to doing it. Yes. I mean, I'm scared. This is the second time we've done it, and you know, it's it, it's it just it's well, it's counter. Um, what's the word? Counter Counterintuitive um, to cut a hole in your tent that survival experts, Bear Grylls, Ray Mears at all say the first thing you need is shelter, you know, heat and water, and we're about to cut a hole in it. So for more survival, there we go. Right, let's install it. Let's do it. Okay, so we've lined it up with the third panel. We've got our tape measure from our tools, 60 mil right there and we've gone 60 mil from the back of the wall. Actually, it needs to come forward just a couple, no, that's, yeah, a couple more centimeters, let's do it. Right, perfect. So it's really important that you do do that. I know aesthetically sometimes you want it further against the walls, but really, number one, you do not want to get any heat damage on your very expensive, lovely canvas tent. No. And number two, actually, by keeping it in the middle of the tent, you're going to keep that warmth in here anyway. So um, make sure you do use the designated 60 mil, uh, 600 mil, isn't it? Six, 60 centimetres, 600 mil. Um, right, now we're going to get a pen. It's a permanent marker. This is pretty definite. The, the, so we want it as in the middle as possible of the panel. So that's really more for aesthetics. So I'm just going to find out, you know, roughly where the middle is. So it's 75 centimetres. Half of 75, Emily? It's 37-ish. 37 37-ish. 37 that's fine. I'm all right with that. So 37 is taking us here. So then that's obviously not going there. That's going there. One sec. Take that, please. So 37 is taking us to the middle. Let me just check that again. Can you just pull that out? That's fine. That's a bit droopy. It is. All right, we don't need an innuendo laden <laughs> hot stuff. So I'm going to make a little circle, a little mark there. So what we're saying right now is that's the middle of the chimney. So I'm just going to kind of line that up again. Smooth, uh... smooth. Yeah, that's the middle of the front. So what you remember is there's actually a bit of flexibility in this. So the canvas moves, okay? So it's not rigid, so it doesn't need to be millimetre perfect. You know, you want it as close as possible. And then on the flashing kit, that's also rubber. So once again, there's a, there's a bit of movement in it. And I know there's also some 45 degree ones out there. We're not experts on the flashing kits, um, but there are plenty of blogs that link to them um, out on the internet. Okay, we're gonna fit this, aren't we? <laughs> I'm nervous. Are you nervous? Uh, absolutely no. fine. Right, undo the belts. Am I going to cook it? What's probably worth saying at this point is there's three parts to this. So there's one metal flange will go on the inside, yeah. and then on the outside goes the flashing kit and another metal flange. And then we've got two washers, a nut, and a bolt. So it will go. Uh, bolt. Bolt. I had to think about <laughs> bolt. Washer through washer nut. And also, stating the obvious, this bit goes outwards rather than inwards. Yes. So we, this is one of those tricky bits. So we now need to line this up. Do you want to draw it on? Mm -hmm. I might get a camera and get a bit closer. Do you want to hold that? So we've put it in, we've lined it up, so that's in the centre of the flange. So now we're going to draw the circle, and then we're going to draw a little line, a little dot in all of the where the holes are going to go. Then I think we're going to pinprick the holes. And then cut that and then attach the flashing kit and then cut. Can I take this away or do we Yeah, you can take that away for a second as long as you're happy with where it all is. 
Um, Moment of truth. Oh my goodness, Alan. I know, I know. So Emily uh, is just going to do 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 the little holes first, and we're going to attach the flashing kit. So just a little hole big enough to get the nut and bolt through. That's it. Very nice and gentle. You only want to do it gentle because you don't want it to spread at this part. We just need these big enough to put the nuts and bolts through. We're going to put it on, cut the circle, and then take it off again to tidy it up. So then, Emily, just put a cross in the middle and I'll explain why, because it will allow us to pass things through as we're attaching it. A little bit bigger than that. I got there, but I'm doing it. <laughs> No. Okay. Oh, made. So, should we let's attach this? I'm going to take half of the nuts and bolts outside. You've got the other half in here. Okay. Right. So, yeah, you can see we've installed that. So now we're going to. It's obviously gone slightly out of alignment because that's. This isn't 100% tight, so we're just going to hold it up a bit and then uh, we're going to cut round. And then once we've cut round, any raggedy edges we can actually just tuck inside. You want them out of the way. Right, you ready? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we have our hole. Now that's in, I'm going to go back outside and Emily's going to line it all up, tidy it up, and I will do the easy job. <laughs> <laughs> It's probably also worth noting that you want to keep the nuts and bolts as kind of pretty as possible, so keep them vertical and then the other ones in the cross afterwards. Right, so what we've done, we've, we've installed it all, and we need to just remove a little bit more material. So I've come back inside, because I don't need to be outside, and Emily's just gonna put her fingers through, hold the top of the nut, nut remove the bolt, and um, just kind of tidy up the edge of the canvas again. It's always better to do a little bit, and then a little bit more, than cut yeah. really... Well, I guess this is an extension of measure twice, cut once, isn't yeah, it? You know, we, we don't want to go, yeah, that'll do, because no, nope, that won't be acceptable. And, you know, you want it to look neat. You want it to function properly. And uh, so that's all we're doing. But we don't need to remove the outer bit. Um, yeah. And it is one of those, we've drawn the circle. <clears throat> and what you might find better is just cutting slightly outside the circle. Or, as you say, you can just tuck it in. If, you're, if you do have lots of raggedy edges, you can just tuck it in. Oh, I've lost it then, but that's fine. Oh. Bottom left. Okay, so the um, flashing kit is in now. So the last thing we need to do is put the chimney into the um, canvas itself. So Alan's going to start with the first bit, which has the air regulator on top of it. That's yep. the first bit that goes in, followed by the second bit from the narrow end going up to the, the fatter end at the top. So, so we actually going to put it through there, then install that, and the, then put them in the, the stove. The rubber silicon should take about 300 degrees in heat. It's about that, yes, that's so, um, what I believe it. It should keep your tent nice and spark free. Yeah. Right. Should we go outside and put the rest of the chimney on? Let's do it. All right, let's, yeah. Right, so we're going to continue. Excuse me, um, more importantly. Yeah, I know, it is a bit bright out here. We're installing a stove at the start of summer, but then that'll give you the summer to install it and enjoy it to bake some croissants for breakfast. But we're going to finish the chimney first. So we've got three more bits of the chimney. One. Part one. Part two. 
Now, having learned from this before, sorry, having learned from this before, don't put that bit on that bit because you won't be able to reach it. So install them all. Other way, darling. Oh, yeah. Install them all and attach it. And there's your chimney. Um, the loops, oh, the loops, the connectors on the spark diffuser, that's if you, if you want to guy rope it down. If you think it's going to be windy or you want to be extra safe, then you'd attach clips, metal work, and then some ropes going down and uh, peg it out. And also, um, if you are not using your stove and you don't want to take it on camp with you, um, the best tip we can give you for making sure that this little big hole, this little big hole, this big hole that you've now cut into your tent, you put a tennis ball in, tennis ball will create a nice seal and stop that water coming through if it does rain. Brilliant. Right. Happy glamping. Um, so I'm Alan, this is... Emily. We're from Bay Lily Bell Tents and the Outside Bry. We hope you've enjoyed learning how to install your Frontier Stove into your five metre bell tent today. If you like what you've seen, please do give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and leave a comment and let us know where you're going glamping and what you're going to be cooking on your stove. Have a great day. Bye.